As you mentioned, the Positive and Electrolytes Foundation, together with the Health Ministry and uh, Collection Preventive Services, is hosting Prostate Cancer Awareness. It's a panel discussion, and it is Let's Talk About Sex. So our panel consists of Dr. Diego Ramos from the St. Martin Medical Center. He's a urologist. Mm -hmm. We have Mr. Raymond Benjamin. He is a prostate cancer warrior. We have Mr. Van Krieken. He is a businessman on St. Martin. We have Michael Ferrier, a prostate cancer survivor, as well as Mr. Snow, who is also a prostate cancer warrior. And that is also followed by Dr. Carlos Rojas, who is a urologist at the St. Martin Medical Center. This event happens on September 1. It is from one from 7 p.m. rather to 9 p.m. And it's going to be held at the Government Administration Building. There's a conference room there, room 1, on the Swaliga Road, Pond Island. And we are inviting men to come out for this very, very interesting and interactive discussion related to prostate cancer awareness. Why the theme, let's talk about sex? It definitely gets the attention, and because we're talking about the prostate, many men have expressed concerns about um, having challenges or being able to not, not wanting to go and get checked when it comes to prostate cancer because they figure that this has an impact on their sexual sexuality, on their sexual life as well. And we wanted to make the, uh, get it very clear and have an opportunity for men who have questions that they can ask people who are the doctors, the professionals, as well as people who have gone through treatment and today are cancer survivors. Hmm. This is not the first time that such a session is being held on St. Martin, particularly. Um, do you think, or are you sensing that there is a need for the information to be provided to the general public overall? There is a strong sense of the need for information. This was also something that the um, urologist, Dr. Ramos and Dr. Rojas of the St. Martin Medical Center feel very strongly about, and therefore they are always um, uh, anxious to cooperate and provide that valid information. Survivors like Mr. Ferrier, like Mr. Snow, Mr. Benjamin, and Mr. Van Krieken have all expressed the, um, the importance of men getting checked and getting checked early on. The part of the media being so what reeled in on the expense or the amount they can charge for commercials so that they are uh, talk shows or they, then they don't overcharge. So at present, you're, you're paying a few guilders now. You got, I, know, I think it's $200 you're paying by a registration to do a talk show. Two months ago, it was nothing. Come postulation day, it will go up. So the question is, how is this going to be regulated? This is an open economy. How, how are you going to say, it, listen, a, a talk show, it's not a necessity for a politician. It is a better way to expose yourself. But podcast is the way. You notice how much sipping tea we got and this one straight talk. Everybody got a podcast now. Because with a podcast, you also get to the people of Samantha. Majority of the people have social media. So you can easily do that. The radio talk show is not a necessity. This is not like bread, milk, water, electricity, and all those type of things. You can't curtail it. I think it's ridiculous that it even came up. If somebody get a lot of money from corporate sponsors and they want to do it, why are you objecting to it? Maybe, maybe, Madam Prime Minister, what you would have had to actually do was set a regulation that the government will make an X amount of money available for all qualifying parties and I agree with you, is it 1% or 2% or 3% of the population that you need signing up for? And you do that every time. Not because you are in office means you don't have to sign up. If you want money, then you have to sign up, show that you have the support and you get it. And then you give a comfort afterwards. That way you can make a law that no businesses can donate to political parties so that they own ministers. 
Because that's what you're fighting. Call it what it is. Stop beating around the bush with all kind of stupidity. That's what puts us further from the goal that we want to truly achieve. If you want to achieve a fair elections, there are ways you can do that. And yes, it means you have to make harsh decisions. And those that are wrong you, will tell you no, don't do that. We will lose a lot of votes and cause a lot of problems. When will the AOV be paid out to the recipients which have, which had actually happened since January 1st, 2023? I saw a post on Facebook, I think it was, how the op brought home the AOV. And I, I, I don't know if they understand the true meaning of bringing home. Because when you give people 98 guilders, additional per year and that 98 guilders is only if you have 50 plus years in the EU, in the written in the Samaritan uninterrupted because if you don't have that you ain't getting the 98 guilders you're getting less but in reality you're getting 1334 guilders if you was getting everything that is 75 percent approximately of the minimum wage and you're proud man you should be ashamed of yourself you all should be ashamed of yourself you have to find a way to make AOV pension, again, I, I'm, I'm going to keep saying it, it's not a pension that you are calling it. It's a provision. It's a provision made in the law to help people that don't have a pension. Because at the end of the day, people that have a pension that's over 1,334 guilders, you can get much of them. They don't get much from that AOV. So again, but it doesn't mean to say that they have a livable wage. Because the livable wage, by all accounts, is approximately 3,500 guilders a month. Now, I know AOV can go from 1,300 to 3,500 because the fund would be bankrupt. But there are a lot of people collecting AOV that don't even live in Samaritan. That money is going abroad. But you didn't fix that. You come waving a big flag of victory that you gave them a whopping 98 guilders a month extra. You ain't shame. Your salary is 20,000. This is 1,334 maximum. So please, don't ridicule yourself by saying you did such a great thing. No, it's not a great thing. It's a step in the right direction, but it surely is not the, so only, the solution for these people. These people go to bed hungry still, or wake up in the morning and can't eat, or can't pay light bill, or can't pay transportation. So there's nothing to be proud about. Absolutely nothing. You should have left it in a corner and not talk about it. And you would have been more appreciated by me and others than going out there boasting and waving a flag as if you did, su you did such a great thing. When in reality, it's not such a great thing. Our seniors are still suffering. They are still being taxed and all kind of things for any other income they have. That you all should have been fixing. Instead of waving a flag, you give them 98 guilders more. Please, man, come on. Time rules. Don't serve yourself first. Do not eat with your mouth open. Don't rest your elbows on the table. Don't make noise when eating. Does not apply when enjoying KFC buckets. When we bucket together, we are as we really are.
SSV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SSV is cardless. Request your My SSV account today and enter the virtual office of SSV. Go to SSV.SX and sign up now. SSV, yeah, your social health insurance. During the hurricane season, a potential tropical cyclone can produce rainfall that can cause flash flooding and rock falls. Stay away from flood-prone areas during heavy rainfall, such as Jump Up Casino on Emil Plain Road in Phillipsburg, A.T. Illich Road Roundabout, L.B. Scott Road from Emilio Wilson Park until Cake House Supermarket, Zaker's Gut from Petro Plus Gas Station until the Seventh Day Adventist Church, Welkalakin Road K Hill from Welkalakin Road Roundabout until the One Tete Loke Roundabout, Beacon Hill Road from Sunset Bar and Grill until the beginning of White Sands Road and Rhine Road, also known as Mullet Bay Road, after Sonesto Maho Beach Hotel to the entrance of Cooper Coy from the intersection of the University Drive until the intersection of Rio Grande. For more information on how you can keep yourself and your family safe this hurricane season, visit stmartingov.org forward slash hurricane. This public service announcement is brought to you by the government of St. Martin. On Thursday, August 24th, we'll be holding a workshop entitled Applying to Schools in the Netherlands. Uh, this particular workshop is for students in their um, exam years and also pre-exam years and also those students who have graduated and uh, haven't decided what they want to do. Um, it's primarily um, geared at students who are looking to apply to MBO, HBO, and WEO schools in the Netherlands. It's going to be held at the Government Administration Building from 6 to 8 p.m. And um, of course, it's required that you uh, call us to register 543-1235 uh, 543-1235 to register for this particular workshop. Basically um, students applying to MBO schools have more difficulty than students applying to HBO schools and we're going to be giving them information on how to apply to schools for both the MBO and the HBO level. So students you can come out and get the information and be properly informed. Give us some of the priority or main services offered there under the civil registry that links directly to PSC and how you guys interact with each other. Well, um, we're the liaison, of course, with their information, okay. in-depth information. Um, we have ID card applications. That's one of the top services right now, mm -hmm. the driver's license, their passports, and especially our number one registration forms. Absolutely. <laughs> so you need a registration form for everything. So that's what right now is a top service for them. Mm -hmm. And of course, we play a role where that comes in because we have to make an appointment. And that's where PSC comes in. So we schedule their appointments for them. And then, of course, they take it from there. Okay. So which departments are assisted by PSC within CVR? Uh, we don't assist them. Like how do you say? We don't assist them directly. Okay. But indirectly where the appointments is concerned. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. And registration being one of the main services, any others that, that makes the top three, top five list? ID cards, driver's license, passports. Awesome. Okay. What are the current projects being carried out right now uh, by CVR? Uh, the current projects right now that are um, carried out by CVR is the uh, upsconing project, which is the cleaning of the registry. The cleaning of the registry. Okay. The civil registry cleanup. And of course, we take this opportunity to encourage people to make sure that they do come in and they do update their details and making sure that they're properly registered and identified in the system. Um, I want to kind of get into the next level of services offered. For example, the certificate of conduct, very popular document, I would, I would say, next to registration. This is one of the main documents that a person has to get, which is now called the declaration of conduct. Um, is that still served by Public Service Center? Um, as per January 9th, we no longer cater to the declarations of conduct. They're now, we are online. 
via the Justice Ministry. Okay. So the, um, we used to cater to that pro- um, product in, from 2018 up until 2023 of January. Okay. Um, I came to PSC and I met that project there at the time, the Declarations of Conduct. I worked with it for over five years. So, you know, having a product for five years and now it's handed over to an online system, persons still come in to us like, we need a declaration of conduct. So now we have to let them know there's now a new online portal. You have to direct to that portal. And then it gets like, really? Yeah, you have to now go online and follow the instructions. Right. You know, that good old word, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Well, just it's a learning fo- opportunity. Yeah, mm-hmm. just follow the instructions. You'll get there, you know. We no longer cater to that product, so I can give you information. I can guide you. But after that, you still have to go to that online portal. And that is now under the Ministry of Justice. Correct. You have to make sure that that happens there. All right. SHV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SHV is cardless. Request your My SHV account today and enter the virtual office of SHV. Go to SHV.SX and sign up now. SHV, your social health insurance With you, the new Kentucky. A combination that will surprise the most curious palates. Combining the deliciousness of KFC chicken and the practicality of a taco with a doubly delicious ergonomic shape. Wow! Compatible with all types of bites. New Kin Taco. Enjoy a double breaded chicken breast with our secret recipe cheese, lettuce, and tomato. New Kin Taco, the innovation that's in everyone's mouth. It's hurricane season. Are you prepared? Here are a few tips to keep in mind to help keep you and your family safe. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th, with the peak occurring between mid-August and late October. This hurricane season, be sure to put together a go bag. A disaster supply kit including a flashlight, batteries, cash, first aid and supplies, medications and copies of your critical information if you need to evacuate. This public service announcement was brought to you by the government of St. Martin. And uh, based on Sir Dennis Byron's uh, findings, oh, there are six points that I really would like to touch on. And the first one is denying Dominicans born in Dominica, residing abroad, the right to vote. I've known quite a bit of Dominicans in the US, Canada, England, even Guadeloupe and Martinique, Barbados. They work in Barbados or the US. They build their homes here. They have their cars here. They pay their license. They pay their insurance here. And some of them even pay, they contribute to our social security. That tells you that they have a plan to retire in Dominica. And you are saying now that we should deny these people the right to exercise their franchise to vote so that when they come back, 
they cannot ask a question about what happened to their money in the banks or even their social security pension scheme. They cannot get any anything back from the contribution they made. I really don't understand why this is really even an issue because as long as you are Dominican and you're registered, you should be allowed to remain on the voters list and you should be allowed to vote whenever an election is called. But when I listened last night and the lies that went on, I think I had to come out to give some people the facts. The question is, why are we here today? Why are we here tonight? Why are we here with those consultations? And we are here because an opposition party does not want to accept that it lost consecutive general elections. Elections in Dominica has always been free and fair. The system we have as, uh, under which we conduct our elections, all major political parties have won elections on, under the same system. In 1995, an opposition political party with 33% of the total votes cast from the government under the very same system. That opposition party won 11 seats, five of which, five of those seats were won on a minority. So if the Freedom, if the freedom Party and the Labour Party had come together into an arrangement to contest those seats, those elections, the then government would not have formed the government, the government because they would have only won six seats. For the education aspect of those uh, consultations, I believe that we, the Dominican people, including myself, are much more educated on the issues of election today than we were even before this consultation started. And so I believe coming out of these consultations, if anything will come out of it, is the fact that the Dominican people today are much more conscious and aware of the rights, and by being here, they're prepared to defend it at all costs. And you can see, we have a very young audience, and that is very interesting, because the young people have made it their business they have shown a certain level of maturity. They have shown a certain level of understanding the issues that they have decided to come out there and to show their support and their solidarity for the issue being debated right now. When it comes to campaign financing and monies, I have tried, like I have a, a, a group, which is an elderly group, and I have learned in organizing my group if, for example, some organization out of Dominica want to give me $10,000, and I don't want anybody to ask me, um, well, you have $10,000 and you can only use $5,000, and we will do this with the other $5,000. I had to register my group as a non-profitable organization in order for this to happen. You have to, you have to go through all the protocols. And I'm trying to understand as a, as a a private entity, I had to do all that just so that someone don't have to scrutinize, you know, like let's say monies or, or pampers or whatever I would have received. And you're saying to me, like a, a government who runs a country, somebody should tell them that if the airport costs $30 million, they should not accept $30 million, but accept $20 million because the government have no right to have such amount of money. It's ridiculous. I am really, really glad to see a lot of young people. I am really glad. I mean, it means that we understand or we are understanding that telling me that I am not able, or let's say for my example, my daughter who lives overseas, are not able to come to Dominica to vote 
when that day is called, for me is ridiculous. And like Mr. Shem, I will fight for my rights.